So welcome everybody. Thank you for coming, even though it's a little drizzly outside tonight. Uh, I'm sure it's just a uh, beginning of things to come. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, uh, we are the Ontario Genealogical Society, the CAD branch. Um, OGS has been preserving family histories for over 50 years and they have 30 some branches all across Ontario and they're the largest, largest genealogical society in Canada. <coughs> And we are the Kent branch, so we focus mainly on Kent research and resources and materials. If you've never been up to our collection, it's housed in the second floor of the Chatham Kent Public Library. Um, we're open, open Wednesday to Saturday, um, 1 o'clock till 5 o'clock, and there's a volunteer on duty, so feel free to come on up and get and visit with us. We have a website. Um, you can contact us from our email. And we have a very active Facebook group. If you're on Facebook, you want to join, and uh, lots of things going on there, lots of events happening. People are posting pictures and sharing information, asking questions, getting lots of help. Um, it's time to start thinking about membership to OGS for 2019. Um, a few different things. The Grow Our Families program is going to happen again. That was, if you recall, um, the last two years. If a renewing member can bring on a new person to OGS, they both get 50% off their membership, which is a really, really good deal. And if you're a new member and you don't know anybody who is a current member, just see one of us that has a green lantern on and uh, we can hook you up with somebody that's going to be renewing. Um, for those members who are renewing, you need to do it before December 31st this time. There's going to be no more grace periods. They're not going to let you, you know, just kind of hang out and not renew to the middle of January and keep your membership going it will end and then you'll have to go through the process of, of renewing again. So be sure to do that before December 31st. Um, if you're a family member uh, or you have a family membership, um, the same thing. You need to renew before December 31st because they're going to make some changes to the memberships. Um, there will be no more family membership. Um, but if you have one now and you renew before the end of the year, you'll just be grandfathered in. So you can continue to get that benefit. Okay. And then everything happens November the 1st is when the uh, membership opens and everybody can start renewing or bringing that friend in and getting that discount. Okay, any questions about any of those items? Um, if you are an OGS member, you'll be getting lots of um, emails about this because they don't want anybody to miss out on renewing. All right, uh, we were very busy this past fall. Uh, we had several events. We attended the international plowing match. I feel like I'm in front of your your page there. Um, we had a great, great turnout. There was a lot of volunteers and we greatly appreciate everybody who had a hand in, in making this a success. We had a fellow from um, Utah, the Family Tree Maker organization, sent their representative up here to do an Ontario tour. Um, he stopped in and gave a really good presentation. Um, he left us some of the companion guides so you can purchase one for $21 Canadian, which is it's a pretty good deal. Um, and think Christmas presents. If you know anybody that already has family tree maker, they might want a guide to go along. And we did have a draw that night, and Diane Haskell uh, won the uh, family tree maker program. We have a road trip coming up October the 27th. We are going to be visiting the Tilbury Historical Society's location. So they're here tonight to tell us what they have, and then we're going to go and actually see it. Um, and then while we're down in that neck of the woods, we're just going to keep on going down the road to Wheatley because they have a really good historical society as well. So we'll be meeting here in Chatham at 9 o'clock for anybody that wants to carpool. Uh, we're going to park over at the old tar Target store um, and head on to Tilbury, or you can just meet us in Tilbury if, you, if you're in that neck of the woods and you don't have to drive into Chatham. So we'll tour their facility from 9.30 to 11.30. Then we'll head to Wheatley. We're going to go for lunch at the car barn, roasted chicken. Uh, and at 1.30 till 3.30, we're going to tour the Wheatley and District Historic His Heritage Society. They have a really nice collection as well. <clears throat> There's just a couple photos of, the, of each, each group, the Tilbury Historical Society and the Wheatley Historical Society as well. So if you have any ancestors in that area, this will be a good road trip for you to come along. And it's open and free. We just like people to register by emailing the branch so that we can make sure we have enough reservations for lunch. Another event we have coming up is our second annual 
Family History Fair that we're co-hosting with the Chatham Kent Public Library. We held it last year and we were hoping for 50 people and we must have had almost 300 people. It was a huge success to the point where people were asking, are you just going to do that again? So the library initiated it because we were a little tired from all the other events we were doing. Um, so we are going to be doing it again November the 3rd from 10 till 4. Um, there's some flyers at the back. So if you're interested and you want more information, just grab a flyer. Again, it's free. It's open to the public. Spread the word. Um, guest speakers, tour of the collections, children's activities, some door prizes. So that's on November the 3rd. And we do need volunteers. So if there's anybody that would like to, you know, direct people up the elevator or the stairs, tell them where to go, or help with canning, or, you know, come and stand in our room and welcome people in, we need all kinds of help. And then our November presentation, November the 9th, um, Jeff Bidler is going to come and he's going to discuss the military families from Erie. So tonight we have the Tilbury folks here and they're going to be talking about researching in Tilbury and their collection and their societies. Um, it's really important for family historians to, you know, understand what was happening in the area that their ancestors came from, um, what resources are in that area, how to locate them. Um, so that is why we invited the Tilbury and District Historical Society to come to share that because their facility is fairly new and uh, we are really anxious to know what do they have in that area. So, Nate, without further ado, have you come up and we'll do a little switch here. So do you want to just hold this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll move this up. Well, we can get a little closer if you want. I don't know exactly where you like to turn on. I want to be over a little bit so you're not blocked. Who's good? Oh, okay. That you can be able to see it. We get started. Yep. We just want to thank you for inviting us here tonight. We haven't done this before, so bear with us tonight. We're not sure how long you're going to be here. And approximately 95% of our material were donated either by Maxine Gardner, if anybody knows Maxine from the library and all that, or Sylvester McEwen. And uh, we'll tell more about that as we go along. But they were very, their families were very generous in letting us have their materials that they had been saving and working on for years. So we appreciate that. We're still sorting and trying to bring things up to date. And of course, you know, that's an ongoing job, it never ends. Everything happens, everything's always happening. We have a Facebook page, and that's brought us requests for help from the US and the UK, and of course, locally as well. So we've been able to help quite a few different people, and, and uh, we just feel that we are needed. You know, we're all needed to save what has gone on. And first of all, before we get too far into this, I wanna share what, um, what the building is. <coughs> The top one, of course, you can see has no cardboard on the side. That's when they were renovating. The bottom one is what it looks like now. So you can't miss it. Just ask for the yellow house if you're going on this trip that's coming up. Okay, it's called the Lanoue Homestead because that's who lived there for the longest. It was built of logs in 1850s by Joseph Blarge and was originally located where the present post office is. If you know Tilbury, it's on the corner of Queen and Canal. And it was there originally and then was moved down to where it is now at the corner of Elm and Canal. In 1885, that's when it was moved. And that's now, of course, the Tilbury District Historical Society. Uh, Jean-Baptiste Lanoue was an early settler in Tilbury North, and he purchased the house with 25 acres of land about 1865. He had this house covered with clapboard and resided there until 1885. 
In 2007, Paul Corey and Leo Annis purchased this house to restore it back to its original state and have and, uh, have used it now for genealogical, re genealogical research. In February of uh, 2007, the Chatham Kent Council approved a deal where the municipality has taken possession and labeled it a heritage house and is now leasing it back to our group. <coughs> I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, these books. These are the books from the French family from the Detroit River region. When I first uh, started my ancestry, I went to the library in Bell River because I, I found out my grandfather was born in Bell River. So I went there and asked which are good books to uh, get some information from, and they gave me these books. Well. I uh, and I went through these books and I couldn't believe it. You can see it highlighted there that I found my great grandfather all the way back from the beginning. Back in uh, he, they came from France to Quebec in 1691. Then they moved to Assumption Sandwich in the late 1700s. By then, I was hooked in ancestry. I was, I just had to keep looking at stuff, keep trying to find and get more and more. And um, I did. I discovered that my great grandfather, even though he was living, he, they moved to Bell River, he's buried in Stony Point, but his wife is buried in the Bell River Cemetery. Well, I don't know. Maybe they, wherever they, pass away, that's where they bury him instead of hauling him back where they actually live. And what, But when I first uh, started going through to look for some information, I went through the cemeteries and I would walk through them. And um, I, whatever happened to have my last name or my dad's last name, I would snap pictures. And it turned out I had actually snapped my grandfather's and my grandmother's at the different cemeteries. So after that, I knew my mom's family came from Tilbury. So I drove by and I seen this yellow building. And I said, one day I'm going to have to stop in and, and check it out. And I did. And lo and behold, they had the same books there in, in Tilbury, but they were in a lot better condition because I guess these families weren't the ones that they had for Tilbury. It was more the... Um, other area. So once I started going there, I never left. I've been there ever since. We're so glad. <laughs> um, we teach each other things, help each other. We become a family. So, and still, even after being there for three years, I'm still discovering new things that they have in this place. It just depends on what you're looking for. And when you start looking for the, you know, certain things, then you find the book that is right here. I don't have to go somewhere else to look for it. I don't, I'm not sure how, how many of these that you don't already know about that we have at our location, but. This is what we have, and this is what you're going to see. This is an eight-volume set, and it's written in French, and contains all the French family names, dates, etc. that you'd expect to find in a dictionary, biology, whatever it is. And because a lot of people around Bell River, Tilbury, St. Joachim speak French, they're all French families, so they would find this handy for them. So I had there was comments in one book about the author and by the author. So I had one of our ladies who does know French, can speak French and read French, translate a few comments so that I'd like to share them of what, about this set. It took the author, his name was Cyprian Tanguay, if you've heard of that name, mm -hmm. took him to France along the Mississippi and to the Gulf of Mexico in his research of these French families that came to Canada. It took him 25 years. So don't be discouraged if you're doing your family tree 
or helping someone, it's going to take a while, I guess, to find all this. I should say, too, that all my relatives are in England. And the reason I volunteered here, I wasn't into genealogy at all. The reason I volunteered there was because I live across the road. <laughs> and I thought, oh, great, I just have to walk. And I can help, you know. And so that's why we're, we're um, she's so really good at doing the uh, research. And I just say yes or no and agree and go on. <laughs> and we, we found that and French immigration was weak in the 18th century, and there were a lot of holes left in the information that families wanted to find. So this is what he was asked to do, find the genealogy of a nation. And Canadian people can now trace their family tree from the first French settlers. And he writes, this type of work might be boring to many, but it has always intrigued me. And I'm sure that says a lot about the rest of you who are in this stuff too. So now the French families who came from Quebec the ancestors, their descendants, can find out all about them. Okay, these are the uh, obituaries that we cut out of the papers and keep copies of all the people from Tilbury and the surrounding areas. It's a great source to do a family tree. Because on in obituaries, there's always, whether it's him or her, uh, their names. Um, if it's a her, her maiden name, their births and their deaths, their parents' name, their children's name, their siblings' names, their spouses of both. And it tells you where they are buried. And lots of times it will put, people will put the, their interests, like the clubs they belong to, and things like that. So we have lots of paper clippings. Some of them are so old that they're falling apart. So we're, every time the Tilbury Times comes out, we go through and find the pertinent information. This one here is mostly about births, deaths, anniversaries, graduations, marriages, all that type of thing. But we also have another index of events. That's an ongoing thing. Every week we go through the paper and then we file away information that might pertain to a certain person and so that they have that, although they, you know, if they know what the paper's in, they, they can find it. But it's always an ongoing thing, as, as you know, because, because, you know, everything happens. And we try to cover an area from Berlin to Conger because there are, there's Wheatley, there are you, there's others that have historical societies. You don't need to cover that area. So we try to stick to local people and the local area just to condense it just a little bit so we're not focused, uh, not focused at all, so that we can have some kind of uh, purpose. <clears throat> now, there was a legend with this, like I didn't start this, this was already going when I joined, and there was an O, and I, we couldn't figure out for the longest time what the O meant, because we figured everything was covered, but it means was occasion. Whatever that, we're still trying to figure out what occasion do they mean. But anyhow, so this just kind of will help someone uh, further down who has a put this. That's what we need to do is, is if you're not around, who's going to know what you put down if you don't have it in front, in front of them? They need to know how you came about uh, putting this person here. Was, were they married? Well, it tells you that. And so we just need to make sure that we keep doing that or, or no one's going to know where to start. And you all know that, I'm sure. Well, these are great books. I love these too for information. These are the church books that we have from all the surrounding areas like Tilbury and there's Windsor, Bell River, Stony Point, Comber, St. Joachim. And in these books, you get the information like the person's name who they married, the date they married, the age they were married, who his and her parents are, the date they were born, and the date and age they died. This one is family ancestry. This, I just love ancestry, I'm telling you. I did quite a few um, ancestry 
for <laughs> both myself, like just my family alone, I think I did a dozen of them because I also did like my, my sister's spouse's family tree or my cousin's father's family trees and stuff like that. And everybody does it differently. Some people just do it like this where they just put names. Just names and dates, that's it. Where others will put pictures. Where I I did those, I put everything. Everything I find, whether it's their tombstones, their death certificates, their anything. Anything I can find. Family pictures, whatever. So my books are a lot bigger than everybody else's because I put everything. Um, doing this, lots of times, because I, I have a, an account on Ancestry, and when I start a new family, I'll start a new Ancestry on my account. And lately, I've been getting people who have been asking me that I a distant relative and wants to me to help them with theirs because we're related somehow, somewhere along the line. And lately, I have had two separate people from San Diego, California, get in touch with me. And I would get their information from that area, and I would give them the information that I found from this area. Lots of people who do, I've done it myself, who do their family tree will donate a copy to us. So maybe somebody, either your, your ancestry might already be done, or it's, yeah, it's a branch of your ancestry. So we have several people who have done that, which is very nice. Cemeteries. Okay. Cemeteries, in, we have, those are all the books of all the different cemeteries, as well as the church books. We have the cemeteries for all these areas, Storm Point, Tilbury, Bell River, and all that. And the way they do them, like at, at the... Uh, when you ask for a copy of the names and that, this is the way you get it, where it's just the names and uh, their dates, where I'm doing it this way. I put their names, but I also attach the tombstone. That way you get the information of the spouses. You know you got the right person because there's so many people that have the same name. So many, it's unreal. And so, this way you'll know you got the right person because that's the name of his wife. That's right. And the one thing about cemeteries, it's never ending. It'll be go on forever. <laughs> so I'm slowly trying to redo that. I'm still in the first cemetery. But I'll get to a little eventually. <laughs> and what I like is it has their names. And lots of times they have their spouse's main name on there too. So that's a good thing. Hey, these are just two display boards I made up to take to Art in the Park and uh, other things I've, we've been taking them to. Um, before we did anything like this tonight, but we have so many pictures of the old town and pictures of the old houses and the people, and a lot of them have no names. And I'm sure you've run into that too. We can't identify a lot of people. The pictures are old. The people who would know are no longer around. So uh, we, it's just we try to ask the older ones in, in, uh, in town if, to help, but sometimes they aren't able or they don't remember. But so we, like I said, the stuff that we, that was donated to us just kind of came in boxes and we're still going through them and we're trying to find out who people are because they aren't labeled. That's an unfortunate thing. And so we do have a lot of uh, pictures of businesses that are no longer around. They've closed, they've moved, whatever. And so we just try to keep all that information in files. And, and if anyone wants to know, then uh, hopefully we'll have something for them. The one at the bottom is a, the Tilbury Houses, and they're also all, all the stately homes. And a lot of them are built on one street. Some of them are there all over town. So I just wanted to share a few pictures of some of those houses. 
Okay, this is the Moffat House, and, and a lot of these are named because of the people who lived in there them for so long. And the, this house is on Canal Street, and it's now painted blue with yellow trim. And it was built in 1888 by James Stewart, and he's quite a mover and shaker in the early days. He did a lot of building. If you heard of um, the Memorial Park and all that, and then he started all different things in town. And the one at the and just, so the one at the bottom is just a different view. And these were all taken. These pictures were all taken in 1986, getting ready for Tilbury's centennial. And Maxine Gardner took all these pictures. She went around town and just started working her camera. This is the this is the Foster House at the top. It's on Stewart Street. Stewart, of course, comes from James Stewart's name. It was built in 1905 by a Mr. Lewis. And this is, like I said, these houses, this is what they looked like in 1986. Some are way different than that now. The one at the bottom is Stewart Street, which where James Stewart resided. And it was later owned by the Odette family. The, you know, the Odette Library, the Odette Park. The, the land surrounding this house at the bottom was donated so that there's the park. There's the seniors walk that they have now behind the house is actually where it is. And um, so, yes, yeah, so these houses are like all built in the late 1800s. This is the Richardson House, built in 1918. 19, I don't know what it was, sorry. It's uh, across the alley behind the post office, is where it used to be. At the bottom picture, you can see it's being torn down. And it was torn down and is now a bargain shop. It was once the Giant Tiger, or Sands, whatever, they tore it down and built those. those so. Unfortunately, we don't have them around anymore. Thank goodness for pictures, I guess, eh? The, the one at the top is uh, at the corner, it's just behind the alley behind uh, the main street. And the flat topped side used to, is an addition that they use for dog grooming and dog uh, boarding for a while. I don't know if it still is. I don't think it is. They've tried that a few times in town, and it just hasn't worked. They have one on Main Street, didn't fly. And this one, I think, just lasted a while. The one at the bottom is now a beauty salon. It was a beauty salon a few years ago, then it was a house, and now it's back to being a beauty salon, you know, a massage, all that stuff. And uh, it's quite nice, they've changed all the color, and it's quite a nice looking building, but I'm, I'm for sure there's a brick underneath all that siding. The house on the top was built in 1903 by an Alfred Kumbaru, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but he built that house. I don't know where they get all these bricks from. I don't know how they imported them from somewhere. But anyway, uh, the bottom house is called the Hutton House, built by William Hutton in 1901, and his descendants lived there until 1968. So that's just a few of some of the houses around. There's quite a few more big stately homes, I call them, and most of them are are refurbished and are looked after, so that makes it nice to have to have that in your town. Okay, we have um, just a second. We also have school yearbooks, the church folder books that people have donated, scrapbooks that contain all kinds of newspaper clippings of things back 1930s, 40s, the ones I said that are, are falling apart. We've tried to get more of the yearbooks because we're missing some, but if you're like everyone else, nobody wants to part with them. They want to keep them from themselves, even though the next generation may not want them or take you know care, but 
I can understand that. I think I've still got my kids to your books. <laughs> I'm still debating, should I take them over the road or not? I haven't decided yet. And then we have the old phone book inserts that we get in the tape in the paper, just so that people can say, well, that person lived there. Maybe they can. Uh, I know that they lived in Tilbury on this address. Maybe I can find out more about them. So that helps. And like I said, we have all kinds of scrapbooks on the war events. Uh, military, we have a one scrapbook that's completely military weddings of people in the military getting married to. Yeah, so it's quite interesting to see who was from Tilbury in these scrapbooks. And we also have uh, atlases, old atlases as well, that uh, pinpoint who lived where at certain times and where the old railroads were, where the old roads were, the roads that have been changed, names changed, so that you don't get lost and uh, everything. So it's uh, quite interesting, some of the uh, information. We have a lot of files that were put together. Like I said, all of this was done before uh, we took, we were got, we really received them. And uh, you can see all the work that's gone into this stuff because computers only came into being not too long ago when you think about it. And all this work was done before that. So, and so with the local families, we try to keep the information up, like I said, from the newspapers and family members who donate some of the papers of their families that they have and want to part with. And we also have keep track of the businesses. Some businesses only last a little while, but they were part of Tilbury at one time. So we try to keep, keep what information we have on them. We have information on all the Tilbury schools, their graduations, the people who graduated, the teachers. Uh, some of them we don't know. People are trying to remember who they were. They can't remember who they went to school with. and They, they don't look the same anymore. So they're having a hard time pinpointing who was in their class. Churches, we have a lot of, like she mentioned, we have the church books. We also have a lot of their centennial or special anniversary books that they put together and donated to us. And we've got, like I said, scrapbooks and everything. And like I said, not a lot of pictures are identified, so we're still trying to work that out. And hopefully one day we'll have a few more. These are just some of the maps, like I mentioned, that we have dating from the, the beginning of Tilbury back in the 1860s. The one at the top uh, right is a little more detailed. It has a lot of the names of people who lived there. And uh, the bottom posters, we have a few of those. And it just gives you an idea of what was going on in that time. And how, how uh, we also have advertisement of how things, much things cost. And, and then it's kind of sickening when you think about how cheap things were and how much it's gone up. We have a lot of, uh, I think Maxine must have liked the Queen because we have a lot of Queen Elizabeth's memorabilia uh, at events in her life. So we have a lot of those and she was quite the artist and she did some pictures of, of everything as well. The veterans. We Sandy Tatro, does, do you know her? She worked at the library in Tilbury for a while. She was a work for the municipality. Anyway, she spent years putting together these binders at the bottom that are people who went to who uh, enlisted from the local area. And uh, the ones in the little binders on that side are the ones who didn't return from the war. And that's just all their information that she's gathered from the government archives and uh, she spent time and she's still working on them because I don't think she will ever be done. She just keeps finding more and more the things that she wants to include, trying to find their graves and because not a lot of them came home. Uh, we also take them these binders to different displays at the Legion and we try to have them out November 11th at the Legion so that people can look through it. And we've seen descendants of their, their offspring saying, oh, that's my grandfather, or that's my dad, or, or whatever, and finding all the information, but they didn't really know what, was, what had happened or what was going on in their lives back then. As someone said tonight about it being a museum, we don't have the room 
for the museum that Maxine really wanted to start. But these are some of the things that we were able to fit into the room upstairs. Just some of the old pieces that she's had. There's um, the spinning wheel. I'm not sure if that was at the house at the time that they were innovating. There's, uh, from the war, someone's uh, bag and, and the uniform and old dresses and stuff. So just some of the stuff. And it's interesting the little the kids like to see that, what's happened in uh, the area. So we just try to keep it small. We've had people ask if we can they can donate certain things and we just don't have the room. We'd love to do it, but so we just send them on to Congo to that museum there when we're able to get the chance. Okay, with all this stuff that we have, we want to preserve it. So we started getting some uh, scanners and that to digitalize them. We scan them all and we have a copy on the computer and a copy otherwise. Um, this, the top one is a, a large scanner that can do our newspapers, uh, posters, uh, large pictures, whatever if anybody needs a copy of and wants a copy of can come and get one whether in color or black and white and it can also be saved onto a UBS stick or whatever. And the bottom one it, you can see how when we were scanning the newspaper it's showing up on the computer and it's this scanner is so good it's the the pictures actually come out better on the computer because it's so nice and bright and clear. And so we have uh, about 18 years of our, our uh, newspapers and we're trying to get some more. We're still working on that. Okay, and this one is a book scanner. That one we can scan the yearbooks, magazines, uh, all the, the <coughs> church books, like all the books. You can see how we scan one and we're preserving that the same way as we did the newspapers on the USB stick and on the computer. So if anybody wants to come in and look something up, it's there. This one is actually just a printer. This one is for anybody who, who wants a large um, printout of anything, whether it's your uh, family tree or a map, a poster, or even if you're building something and you need uh, an extra copy of your uh, building plans, this will do it. And those are all the sizes that it does. The width is 24 inch and it goes all the way from 13.5 to 42.67 inches. So it's quite large. And those are all the different sizes it does. See, I, I did the, uh, the fan of the family tree on my husband's side. And that, see that picture? It was just a little picture I had taken a picture of and I enlarged it to two feet wide that I could go the whole 42 inches if I want. <clears throat> well, that's pretty much what we have. Uh, we do have, uh, some of the pictures weren't inclusive of all of the different things we have, the schools and the churches and everything, but uh, you, we have quite a bit of, uh, like I said, the surrounding area that we are trying to keep, keep uh, localized. Some of the things we have, like she said, we have been covered by the um, Windsor books, they're just, there. it's because that's what was in the collection. And we've just kept them and trying to preserve them. And uh, we haven't really used them, but they're there for anybody who wants them. So, um, so I just want to thank you again for having us. I hope this is what you uh, wanted. I hope it uh, brings you out to the Yellow House in Tilbury. And we'll uh, look forward to seeing you on your visit. And again in November at the Family Fair in Chalice. Okay, thank you.
Were there any questions? I know a few people I thought had questions about, you know, the newspapers. And when are you open? Wednesday and Saturday afternoons, one to three. We're hoping to be open more often, but we don't have the manpower. <laughs> Is there a membership to join? And what would the membership the be? The membership's $20 per year. And uh, we give away one of those books as a part of the membership deal, I guess you could say. Yeah. Something I've been looking for for a long time is was in the collection of Maxine Gardner. It was a diary of a man that uh, wasn't surveying around the area. I think it was a drainage. For, uh, Forbes. Right, Forbes, Henry Forbes. I don't remember the name. I, I it's 25 years ago I talked to you about Because Forbes drain, drainage is the one who did the dash wheel yep. and all that. He was instrumental in that. So we do have. You have the diary? We have letters that were written between him and his brother. Okay. But we don't, I don't think we have a diary. Because Maxine talked about a diary and that she was always going to, you know, write it out. Mm. Yeah, I've been yeah. looking for it for. Well, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for it, but we do have a lot of information on him. Okay. And the, the, the drainage that he did. Okay, thanks. What years are the newspaper collection that you have? Is it, is it the Tilbury Times? The Tilbury Times, 2005 to the present. Okay, so a little bit later. So yeah. What would the newspaper have been? Was there a newspaper prior to that? Probably, but we just don't have copies except back when they're in the 40s when it first started there's clippings people did a lot of clippings out of the paper, newspaper they didn't necessarily save the whole paper that's the, the problem i think so yeah and now do you charge if somebody would like to come in and use your equipment like you're, you're i'm thinking the printing but that's amazing we, we have asked for um i think it's 25 dollars to come in and use our equipment if you do it and we help you. Uh, if you're wanting to do a family tree, it's a $40, $40 deposit plus adding extra if it gets to be, you know, in, in gold. And you all know what uh, time it takes and, and research for uh, a family tree can in, involve. And it just gives a person opportunity to continue or not. So we basically just decided on this recently because we're just now getting to where people are asking us to do that kind of thing so if, if there's just one item you want to get in large you're welcome to come in you, you, we give, you know we have to pay for whatever size it is and you know things like that but uh, yeah we'll print anything now that we have that this is all we all this equipment we just got in last year. this last year in 2017 Another question at the back. If, do you have a listing of all the people buried in St. Francis Cemetery that's related to St. Francis Cemetery? We have the books. I've said, yes, we have books. Books. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we probably do have what you're looking for. That's really helpful. Yeah. Yes, Frank was pointing out that Maxine and Sylvester were both Kent Branch members very They're early on. Right, so. mm -hmm. founding of Branch. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, when you think of the work that he did, like all those files, uh, there's like they're all in rough because that was before computers, before he's, we have letters back and forth between different people where they're sending information and he's asking for information and where he had to send away and buy uh, some document. And um, it's amazing all that he's, of course, some of the stuff we can't, we don't understand his um, shorthand, shall we say. So we're just trying to figure out uh, what he is actually trying to tell us. But um, a lot of it is in rough. But so we're trying to clean that up, but you know, it's it's uh, it's amazing what he did, really, and the years he must have spent doing that. So they were always when we needed something from that corner of the county, they were our go to people, mm -hmm. and they missed ever since. Yes, but they asked, we missed them too. Okay, anything else? Yeah, 
any other questions or comments? Well, thank you so much. I neglected to introduce you, ladies. No <laughs> so this is Liz, um, and this is Margaret. Okay. So if anybody <laughs> wants to chat with them afterwards, uh, definitely oh, yes. grab the DVD. That, oh, yes, and you're stuck at the yeah. back. Go ahead. Um, we want to thank the one gentleman who bought a book. That's going to help. But there we have a book and a calendar for sale if you'd be interested. It's just a way of fundraising. And, and Margaret put the calendar together. She does a really good job, so we let her do it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so anyhow, we have, and we have a pamphlet there if you uh, need some information on our times, our website, and all that stuff. So help yourself there. In behalf of the branch, we'd like to offer you a little donation to go toward your maintenance and your running and your equipment up here. Thank you very much. We, we figured we'd come just to say we're there. Right. You know? <laughs> right. And uh, anyhow, yeah, so thanks a lot. We yeah. appreciate it. And I think it's important because we quite often have people come in and they ask about your area. So that's why we invited you because we didn't know everything that you had. Right. So it's nice to know that if they want to get a family tree printed, that maybe you're the place to send them now or you know, different things. So yeah. that was a really good um, presentation. Thank you for doing that. And we'll see you on the 27th when we go to see the location. So be sure to join us. Um, if there's any other questions or comments or... So we have a nice long social time now. So we don't have to be out of here till 8.30. So grab some more snacks and have uh, another little visit with everybody. And we will see you back here in November for our... Uh, no problem for our military presentation. Thank you.